All right, I want to introduce the third assignment, which is going to be about web images and positioning. And uh, this assignment is basically just going to be an illustrated poem assignment. It's going to have some technical um, objectives, but uh, it also is going to have some aesthetic design objectives as well. So both are going to be very important. All right, so let's go and first start with the assignment overview. Basically, what you're going to be doing, um, like I said before, is you're going to have both design and technical challenges. Um, the aesthetic design goals are to choose an existing poem. Uh, you need to have a minimum of two stanzas, although if there's substantial length, then the two stanza rule is not that important uh, as long as the length is substantial. And visually, uh, you need to convey the theme, meaning and or the feeling of the poem through imagery, color, and movement. Um, the technical objectives for the assignment are so that, um, that you will gain experience and a good understanding of how web images are prepared and how they're used on a web page and some different techniques you know, that you can employ to uh, manipulate the images in a way that's useful. Also, you're gonna learn how to manipulate CSS and deal with the position property. All right, um, or using and also using floats, although floats uh, are, are not an absolute requirement. Uh, so under the getting started section, I have some different uh, steps kind of that you can go through to approach the assignment. One is to start with the poem. All right, so like I said, you have to have a minimum of two stanzas or what I should also put here, it might be there by the time you watch this, is that you can also use a poem that has length that would be equivalent to at least two stanzas. In the second section of you know getting started, we've got brainstorming. Before you do anything, I would start to brainstorm about some words, you know, getting words written down about what the poem makes you feel, the kinds of imagery it conjures, um, you know, what the impact is supposed to be. And uh, then I want you to collect samples and start doing some simple sketches. I'll show you a simple sketch for the example demonstration that I'm gonna show you. I want you to figure out your color palette. You can use like this color palette tool or a paletin. We've used that before in the class. And by the way, before now, you should have already done some uh, other exercises um, or not for a grade, but, you know, little exercises that are um, about positioning so that you have an understanding of positioning. Um, if you don't have an understanding of positioning before getting into this, you're going to have uh, a little bit of a struggle. So, um, yeah, you, you can also find stuff that's texture-based as well as photographic. Um, these are some places that you can look for static images that are high quality, high resolution. And I want you to consider a lot of the following things about, you know, how you can manipulate color, line, form, things like that to make somebody feel something, all right? And I want you to just read through this. I'm not going to read through all of it right now. And... I do want you to start making some basic sketches and do some different sketches. I'm only going to show you one and talk about the ideas that I had that led me to creating what I created. Um, and then you're going to prepare your images for use, select your type, typography. So you'll translate to code and then you'll start to build it. Okay, and then down here are the requirements. I'm going to have you read this. I'm not going to read it to you. But everything in blue sort of prompts you about the basic category of the requirement. And then you need to read what the actual requirement is. Uh, this is supposed to be in blue also under typography. Um, okay, and then uh, down here are the res assignment resources. So you can look at all these different resources. And then we've got some different examples. And um, I'll show you uh, some, different, some different ones. This is the example uh, right here that I'm going to show you, uh, how to, you know, how to approach. And so you can see that it's it's a little bit not super complicated but it's definitely not as straightforward as some of the things that we've been doing um, because you've got you know this heading level up here at the top and then uh, if you were to kind of do this you see that the heading will pop out from behind the the rear hills but then the poem sort of is in between the hills so it kind of comes up and so I'll show you some different methods that you can do to approach that. And as I said before, this is an assignment that's really about positioning and images. And so you can see that like we have the base image that's the bottom, and then we have this masked image that's the middle section. So in between, uh, you know, well, and we also have the top, the top 
when I say top, I mean sort of the topmost layer. So this is on top of everything, even though it's the bottom of the road, right? So this top layer would be on top of everything. And then the next thing you would have is the, the stacking la layer of the poem stanzas. And then <clears throat> behind the poem stanzas is this set of hills. And then behind that um, would be the heading level one. And then behind that is this base full image, All right? So you've got all this stuff kind of coming up, but it ends up looking like this, okay? Which is kind of kind of cool. All right, um, so that's uh, the thing that I'm going to introduce, and it just as a quick, uh, you know, for curiosity, you can look at some of these other examples. Um, if you look at this one, um, you'll see that it's actually the same layout but uh, with a different poem and a different visual treatment of the images so um, that the meaning is actually uh, something that, that makes more sense. And then if you go back again, um, there are a couple of Dr. Seuss uh, poems. One is, uh, they're both the same poems actually, but different treatments. So the first one sort of has a, a mod modest difficulty level. Let's take a peek at that. So you've got something that kind of, you know, does this kind of deal, right? And then you can scroll and you can close this, right? That's one option. And you can also see, you know, what it looks like if you were to rescale. So this is a, an SVG with the, the sort of background image. And, you know, it's it, it ends up being kind of fun, you know, and then if you scroll away, it goes away. Or you can also click the button. All that button is, it's not like a JavaScript button. All it is is um, basically a page that links to itself. And so it refreshes, all right? So that's one option. Um, you could sort of look at that as a way of, of doing stuff. And then you'll notice, what you will notice too, is that, for instance, the way that, the title is it's got multiple drop shadows um, on you know text shadows we've got a link to the author's name also we've got some highlighted stuff with span tags to call out some of the more important things right this is like a little close button okay um, and then if we go back here this is a, a much more complicated version of that uh, that is another instructor example <clears throat> and this is if you were to read the poem, you'd see that it's about a mom who names all of her sons Dave. And so she's got 23 sons named Dave. And then the problem that she has is that when she calls them, they all come running at once. And so if you use your mouse to kind of hover around, you see that, you know, it's sort of like she calls them and they all come at once, right? And so the interactivity is reflective. And this is a hover that didn't load in time. but. Uh, and she looks real happy here, and then she calls them, and then the image of changes. All right, so that one's a lot more complicated. The other thing about this is that it uses SVGs. So you can see that they, they're all independent, as, as opposed to the last one, like in this one, this is just one SVG graphic, whereas this one, I had taken the time to select each one of them, make a different graphic file for every single one of them, and you can see how they kind of interact and change based on the way that this is uh, <clears throat> this whole thing is um, scaled, right? So there's a lot going on in here, but I just want to show you these are all things that you can do with only CSS, or well, with CSS without having to do extra JavaScript. You know, granted, if we were to add JavaScript, it could do even cooler stuff, but we haven't gotten to that place yet. So this is all stuff that you can do with um, basically just CSS. All right, so. If you come back here, um, those are some of the instructor examples. And then, um, depending on when you watch this, there might be one student example, there might be multiples. Um, <clears throat> this student example is another one uh, that you could look at. It's not um, that difficult, but one of the reasons that I did not put a lot of student examples is because uh, this assignment, when I used to give it in the past, um, th things were different with the web. And so I like this assignment, so I, I made it more relevant to, uh, I brought it back and made it more relevant to um, what you can do with stuff today. All right, so I didn't want to give you a lot of examples that weren't even correct examples. Okay, so let's uh, just really quickly look at sort of the starting process um, in this the rest of this video um, so that we can look at how we did 
not that one, <clears throat> excuse me, but how we approached doing this, okay? So the first thing is if you were to read the poem, here's the poem on uh, the resource website, um, you can see that it is um, it's about the experience of somebody taking a trip, driving on a freeway, but it's also kind of, um, you know, a metaphor for a relationship as well. And um, and so I started thinking about what it is like to drive and sort of be on a journey. And for me, you know, the, the idea is that that was uh, something that is going to definitely involve a freeway, long distance trip, something where there's not a whole lot of stuff going on, right? in the uh, in the landscape and so I actually went through and tried to find lots of different resources and found a lot of different images and the one that ultimately kind of uh, resonated a lot with me was this one right and then from that point I decided to do some sketches and then I sort of ended up finalizing in my idea by doing this sketch I'll blow it up a little bit so you can kind of see and what we have here is in the literally it's a hand sketch where I've got a kind of a sketch of the poem and you can see these dark line delineations where I thought okay well if I cut the picture kind of and make it so that the top is you know transparent and we could have some scrolling text that would come up from behind it then we could it would feel you know sort of like the the text was emerging from the hills so that we were experiencing this as part of the landscape and then I thought oh, it'd also be nice if I could not just have it all coming up from the back you know I could also maybe sandwich it in between these hills so that it's sort of like just over the hill you know that we're reading this poem and then I like the idea of having the heading uh, of the poem or the title of the poem be in a separate area so that it can emerge separately from the very rear of the hill, the very back hill. So that meant I had to have three separate images. One would be the background that was the full scale image like on the body and you can see down here I kind of have a little sketch, a little thumbnail that says hey this is the full image that goes on the body background image and then uh, sandwiched like on top of that but in between the other one is this uh, section of this hill part right up here where I'm moving my cursor around um, so that you know that could be set up with transparency and then if you look at the thumbnail down here you see that the top is transparent and the bottom is transparent which we'd have to do in in something like pixel or editor or in Photoshop and that would go on a div that we would call like rear mask or something because it's the rear set of hills. And then maybe um, on the bottom of the, it would be technically on the very top layer, but the bottom hills down here, right, where the road is, that could be on the very top stacking order layer of the, you know, the page so that it could be in a div that was called like top mask or something. And so you know I kind of sketched this out with my ideas I had different revisions of this and then I like the idea of maybe having the, um, the H2 be the title or excuse me the author's name and that could as you scroll the you scroll everything up for the uh, poetry then then the name sort of comes up on top of everything else right and so I'll show you how I could approach different you know different ways of doing that um, but you know I have all these notes and so these are the kinds of notes that might be really helpful for you and you see here I've got this really long line drawn and it says the viewport fold well the fold is anything you know below the bottom of the viewport so that anything below that fold is where it'd be scrollable you know so you don't see it whenever you first open that viewport up all right and what that would mean is that I would have to use like a hundred viewport height uh, dimension which means it's something that it would take up the entire viewport and then I could uh, set background images to cover so that these things would all scale um, identically which is absolutely important so we'll go over all of those things um, in the demo when I show you how to do it but I just wanted to show you like this is a good starting place so you can start to think about how you might want to do some of your drawings in the beginning <laughs> 